Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Uh, today, we have uh, a special guest, Tracy, joining us to discuss the issues X-Men 97 Season 2 is having. And unfortunately, Brian, you sent me the text that I was, you know, disheartened when I, when you, when I read that it was going to be postponed till 2026. Which is a which is just like saddening, but there are issues. It seems like the MCU or Marvel Studios or Marvel Animation, whatever, Marvel Television, yes, are trying to make disappear Bo DeMeo's contributions to season two. Brian, your thoughts on? the latest developments and where you think it's going because you know i just don't want things to change because it seems like it's changing so far brian your thoughts uh yeah this is getting ugly um so we got obviously so Bo DeMeo was the showrunner and the lead writer for x-men 97 he obviously had done a, a number of other marvel projects or had done he took a pass at blade he's worked on some other writing um he gets fired and it comes out there's sort of allegations i'll stress allegations of abuse of the staff um however at the time of his dismissal his dismissal came as you recall i believe a week before season one dropped and he had completed all script work for season two season one comes out unilaterally acclaimed probably the most acclaimed thing marvel's put out since no way home and you know uh, people people missed out cutting room floor missed out on a great pre-emmy show that we did uh we were correct blue eye samurai got the nod but you know x-men 97 was a worthy candidate for that award now we get word season two delayed until 2026 why because the new showrunner matthew chauncey is rewriting all the scripts so scary let me get this straight. So the guy that wrote the show that was nominated and could have won an Emmy that everyone liked wrote season two. But since you fired him, you don't want him anywhere near the output. Because if the output is great, he's going to get the credit for that even after he was fired. So you're going to rewrite all of his work and we're going to just pray that you don't mess it up. Well, Bodomeo had thoughts about that because he's not been quiet. <laughs> not sure about the legal uh, you know, approach to this, but he's on socials. And he came out and spoiled that Onslaught was going to be in the season two finale. But the season two has now been cut from 10 episodes <laughs> to nine to remove that supervillain. And he threw in a quote, quote, Marvel loves shooting themselves in the foot, especially with directors and execs pushing their backwards. We know better than the comics agenda. End quote. Tracy, this is uh, something that we've been talking about for years, almost, almost, almost <laughs> a, a decade, decade, a decade about executives believing that they know best. I don't know, Brian. Tracy, do you? Wow, it almost feels like they were waiting for him to finish what he needed to finish on season two. And then they just got rid of him. But he, the show was that popular. Yeah. That they didn't want his name associated to season two. Cause it doesn't make sense. Like what, what do you think is going on between Bo DeMaro, De, DeMaio and Marvel that there's such animosity towards him to like, just, erase his name from all credits to to the show uh, we're gonna have to agree with brian here um and i put it in my own way up uh, what are the what are the lawyers telling the studio heads because that's what it's coming down to what are the agents saying and what are the lawyers saying hey cut them off no connection wipe them away like ck uh like ck lewis with hbo cut them off wipe them away make them go away yeah but he kind of finished season two well, you want to put that out and then have some type of backlash? I don't think there would have been 
any type of backlash. But it's up to you. You know the, the lawyers. It's up to you. You can do this and run a risk. Run a risk of protest at people's homes to watch the series. I mean, and then the agents. Uh, it, it's it becomes. I mean, it, it is called show business. The business part of it. Who is who is panicking? If we keep this guy stuff, it's almost like a. Uh, the next uh, Billy Joel album. Yeah, well, Billy fell down. Yeah, but I'm still going to put that album out. The next Nirvana. The next, I'm not going to put it out because this one tripped and fell. What, what does that have to do with the album? Um, it's a decision they made to say to disconnect completely. And that's what it's coming down to. Would it be fair to say that because the first season of X-Men was so successful was nominated for an Emmy. If season two goes down the same route, is he gaining too much power? And so he we got to just... Uh, correct. Well, I think... He's, because the fans are going to chime in, obviously, and, and, and already season three is different in any way in terms of quality and storytelling, the gripes are going to be loud and and vicious. Well, let, let, let's be clear about one. Let's be clear about that. It'll be gripes in both directions because if the allegations are substantiated, there'll be plenty of fans who are also going to say, Bodomeo, WTF, why couldn't you be a good professional? That's also going to be a gripe. And that would be a correct gripe, right? Because if these are true, that's mm -hmm. not good either, right? We don't, we, we're not here to tell you that that's, we're going to look the other way just because the show is good. The thing that I would suspect, I have no knowledge, but I would suspect is at play here is the Writers Guild requirement for credit. I would suspect Disney and Marvel does not want his name on the show. And as okay. a result, there are probably rules and regulations for what his contribution is or is not that determines that. So if they were to use his script, clearly he would have to be credited. If he, they didn't credit him in that scenario, he would just march right down to the courthouse and name his price. So it comes down to if they take his work and they completely rewrite it, how much of it do they have to rewrite before they can remove him entirely as a screenwriter, as a contributor, as whatever? Sounds I'm like guessing, sampling. <laughs> I'm guessing that's the bar. And that's what's happening. They are, but the problem is they can't totally start over because season one was a cliffhanger. There's an arc that they already knew they were going to do. So if they were to totally wipe it, that would make no sense. So they yeah, have to kind of use the foundation that he laid, and then they have to overlay whatever they're doing now to make it different enough that legally he can't sue them for the credit later. That would be my guess. Mm -hmm. Which, if you ask me, I I'm sure this has happened before, but if you ask me, like, the odds that we wind up in a better place because of this seem remote. And that's the scary, that's the concern because the excitement level of this show, of this season of the X-Men 97, that first season was just unbelievable. And for it to possibly be threatened uh, because of some gripes, obviously they are very serious. Uh, uh, there's very serious allegations, um, actions that were taken uh, on behalf of Bold and Mario that 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 warrant them from to to get to get rid of him, and now they're going the extra mile. Uh, but we just obviously don't want the show to suffer, so we're hoping that they can maintain because. Tracy, if you saw season one, which I'm sure you did, I'm sure you were you were already thinking about the possibility of onslaught, right? Of course. Um, they laid it out. I'm I'm with Brian. At the end of the day, this this is not going to be good for the viewer. Whatever interpretation is, maybe the, the interpretation that may proceed out of this might be decent, but that won't be good enough. The backlash will be unbelievable. This show came out of the sky. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it, let's keep it real. What if didn't click like this? 
what if did not click like this this show came out of nowhere yeah it had the nostalgia going for it in the beginning but who knew it was gonna forget it but that made it harder i think yes it had to live up to that and not only did it live up to it it exceeded it oh point. yeah oh by by miles you know, the other thing that's interesting with this 2026 delay, so we know that Blue Eye Samurai Season 2 is slated for 2026. Bruce Tim has not said when Cape Crusader Season 2 is coming, but there's a very realistic possibility all three of these shows are head-to-head -head again in 2026. Based upon this news, if I was laying odds, I would certainly have Blue Eye Samurai as the favorite to win the Emmy in that year, deservedly so. You can make a case Cape Crusader should get better odds than... X-Men season two, just because of the continuity. Because I think that show took a little while to get going, but was accelerating into its finale. And I could see it being a lot better in season two because the same people are involved. And if X-Men season two slips or is disjointed, I think we might be having a discussion that maybe Cape Crusader passed it by in a couple of years. We'll see. Tracy, but... did you see Cape Crusader? Of course. And what did you think? Because we never discussed this. Yeah, I know, nostalgic, but to me, it's missing a pop. There's something missing. And then, no, it's not Joker. You don't no. have to put the joke in everything. The nostalgia is there. The animation is fine. I like the correspondence. I like the Alfred Bruce dynamic. It's a set in a world without all the, quote, fancy gadgets. But there's something. It's not. There's something. It, it just maybe it's the, the beginning of a series. Like uh, like anything else, it's the beginning, so you give it a little... I'm just looking for more of a pop. The first episode with the uh, female penguin, that was excellent. Yes. Uh, that, that was excellent. But I think they rid her off. She was gone. Done. Boom. Okay. I think, well, you that's okay. everybody. That's pretty much. Yeah. Right? Well, but I, I think... See, that's the thing. I think the first half of the season was all, like, landscape, which is okay. why it was kind of slow and a little bit uneven. To me, the reason why I think the second half of the season works is Two-Face. Once they started oh, yeah. making okay. the Two Face arc carry over, the show got picked to me, picked up a lot of momentum. Now, obviously, we won't be able to carry that momentum <laughs> into season two, yeah. sadly, <laughs> but I think it showed the template for they may start with their version of a sadistic Joker, which I think is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And if that carries for all 10 episodes the next time, I, that's what I'm saying. I think that, sh that season could have a quantum leap. Uh, in mm -hmm. terms of how people perceive it, so great series of, of that knows that I love the uh, the uh, quote Ghost of Christmas Past episode. I think it was great to actually delve Batman into that uh, arena, which it which it worked out, and the, the script was great, and it worked out, and he didn't have to go the extra limit. He didn't have to become Doctor Fate or Stephen Strange, and it stayed within a parameter, and it actually worked. And then, of course, the black shaman comes along and he puts them in a coin. And they, I mean, that, that was great. It really to, was great. It, it wrapped itself up very neatly. It to me, bro, to, to me, and I think Brian and I sort of uh, agreed that was probably one of the one of the uh, weaker ones for me. Okay, I would because I was expecting, you know, almost a Scooby Doo ending. You know, they found the, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. That's what I was waiting for, and it, but it was like he had a really fight. Uh, Scooby Doo, you're right. It, it was like a Scooby Doo episode. <laughs> yeah, so that's right. with that idea of landscaping because it's like to me they're kind of like using these individual characters. They're messing around a little bit. They're like, hey, we'll yeah. do a supernatural one. Hey, we'll do, do a supernatural we'll do a penguin yes. showcase. We did one that was like a Catwoman showcase. We know these some of these characters will be back. Yeah, you know, so that's like groundwork stuff that I think slowed down the first season. Okay, uh, and like even X Men ninety, even X Men ninety seven, as great as it was, there's like one or two kind of filler. Like yeah, the, the video, the video game episode is very nostalgic, but kind of oh, a filler yeah. episode. Yeah. Why is it a filler episode? Because episode five was coming right behind it, right? So they they that was they were just setting everyone up. Oh Get yeah, all comfortable and smiles about your video game, and then we're gonna rip your heart out. Yeah. You know, so that's oh. and that's how you do it. Yeah, but so. That was anyway, 2026, it's, I think there's a good chance you're going to be talking about these three shows again, going head to head. And Kate Crusader was not at an Emmy level this first season, but I think it can get there in the second season. Definitely, you know? especially with the Joker dynamic. And, and, and the hope is with that, is that he doesn't go the way of Two-Face. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But also with Bruce Tim. 
be wrong if he says, let's bring in other heroes? Would that throw you guys off a little bit? He went supernatural, but could we see a Green Lantern? Could we? I mean, I don't want to turn it into that so. Batman show, that other Batman show where... I don't think he's doing it. Okay. It yeah, I don't Batman. think he's doing it. Because he, he's, yeah. he's kind of saying that the, the template is Bob Kane Batman, the original okay. Bob Kane Batman, which wouldn't have had that in it. So Okay. Yeah. So yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the season two issues X-Men 97 is having and what concerns you have for the second season. Given how great the first season was, we don't want to mess with the formula, but already the formula is being messed with. And hopefully it doesn't translate into what the hell is this? This wasn't what I came... Last week, I don't want what you gave me. What you gave me last week, I don't want this new. Who's the new chef? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, I, I, don't you hate it when you go to some place and the food's delicious, and then two weeks later the chef change and everything is like he quit. Uh, he quit. You know, to that, even though it wasn't the, it wasn't a different chef, but uh, a couple of weeks ago was the 25th anniversary of the Matrix. Uh, I went back to see it in the theater. It was in the theater for oh, wow. like one night. Oh wow! And I was like. I was watching it still great still looks great and yeah then I'm like, i walk out i'm like man i just wish revolutions had never happened yeah <laughs> it just you know it's, it's like just... takes away my enjoyment just a little bit of this classic that that exists that's it matrix is one of those movies you just leave alone drop the mic and walk there's no need that's it but they want to wrap it up wrap it up wrap it up wrap just it up. sopranos it that's it just sopranos it that's it <laughs> leave everybody talking about it for the rest of their lives and that's yeah it. but obviously you know yes when greed sets in yeah oh. <laughs> on the and the possibilities you got to do what you got to do but let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this and we'll see you next time on energy report the show goes on yeah!